I'll let you know when it's happening. Ooh, I'm excited. Me too. <sighs> okay. Alrighty. So here we are. Okay, I'm pretty sure we're live. Yeah, beautiful. Hello, everyone. This is Phoenix, and you get a double episode of Behind the Mask this week because I've got a super special guest, one of my dearest friends and sisters and sisters in prayer, um, Lucine Usani. Um, and for those of you who don't know what this is about, this is my social experiment in showing up from behind the mask, really allowing ourselves to speak on topics that are raw and vulnerable, unpolished, um, that are really moving us in our lives. And today, um, we want to talk about the return of innocence. So I want to welcome you, Lucene. Thank you. Thanks uh, for having me. Yeah, my pleasure. And I just want to kind of give a bit of a brief, brief background that you and I were in a ritual a couple of days ago, um, sitting in prayer all night in ceremony. And and one of the themes that was moving for you was this, this innocence, this place of innocence. And I don't want to go into it. I want to leave that story for you. But I was really, really touched by the profundity that this had in your kind of like, mm -hmm. oh, my gosh, this is like a part of myself that mm -hmm. I left behind so long ago. And here it is. And um, I'm not letting it go anymore. So mm. I'd love for you to share a bit about what this has been since then and how it's moving in your life at, the, at this time. Yeah, well, so I think the actual the origin of that was that I picked I just pulled a card. So I didn't even have going into it like my own kind of idea or relationship about that word. And I think I connect that word to to me, there's there's almost like a negative connotation of like being, especially I think in Spanish, it's almost like the equivalent of naive. Yeah. So like people be like, oh, no se hace inocente. Like, don't be so, you know, don't be such a child, you know? And um, so I think there's a way that I had a kind of negative connotation of it. And then you know, part of, so part of my prayer was about connecting with my grandmother who's transitioning at this time, or maybe not because <laughs> after her ceremony, she, whoa, made this complete recovery, which is another episode in itself, right? Uh, the power of our <laughs> prayers. <laughs> yeah, totally. It's mind blowing. But what, so where, so when I pulled that card, I was kind of like, oh, well, that's interesting, but it doesn't kind of really resonate for me. And there was just this moment where I, you know, I had this real longing to connect to her and I could feel like all of my resistance, all of my, you know, heaviness, my exhaustion, my just resistance to this kind of current situation in our lives and lockdown and, you know, all the other baggage. It was just like, it felt like this lethargy, like I was just carrying this heavy blanket, you know, and so when I sat up for that third round where we were going to give, you know, gratitude and, and step into unity consciousness, and it was just like, well, I'm going to have to let go of all of this if I really want to connect with my grandmother, like I'm going to have to give all of this away. So, you know, I made that offering to the fire without, of course, really knowing what I was, <laughs> what I was offering. It was just like, well whatever it is that's keeping me out of connection to her. I want to give that away. And as and you went down the whole ancestral line, sister. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And there was so much. Yeah. And there was so much, you know, it was just like, okay, well, here we go. I'm going to, have to start with my mom and like, you know, and all of that judgment and all of those, you know, stories that I have about how things should have been and how they weren't. And, and each time I did it, it was like, clearly just like peeling off layers of that kind of armoring you know protection that I have around my heart um and then and then my dad and all of the armoring and judgments and protecting it and really like feeling the weight of how carrying that armor is really just draining my life force like it's really taking me you know it's taking my energy away um 
And then I got to my grandmother and, you know, I think because my connection with her was so much of like, as a child, it was from that place of the kind of original innocence. And it just like, it just like, it just felt like it just stripped away, like all the years of, you know, posturing and positioning and like being, you know, as an adolescent where you're like, oh, my parents are dumb and oh, this person, I can see all their flaws and I can see all, and I feel like all of that just got taken away and I could see her through the eyes that I saw her as a child, which was like, she was an angel, like she was magic. And I don't know if you remember, the thing that actually touched me the most was her smell. It was like, I could smell how her smell made me feel like the world was like a beautiful place. Like it was that, you know, they say like smell has like a direct connection with like with feeling and memory. And it was like, I remember what it feels like to love someone that purely that you just believe that everything about them is good. And it was just like, I want to love like that. Like, I don't give a fuck about, you know, whether I'm right or whether it's, you know, I'm righteous. Like that is such a cheap imitation or like a cheap exchange for having that kind of love in my life. Like, what a that is such a horrible trade-off and it just um yeah it took me back to obviously not much how much I loved her but just how much I could love Mm. and and how much you know life has taught me probably all of us that like we shouldn't love so freely like what if we get rejected what if the other person doesn't love us back what if we're you know it's again it's that word of like I keep coming back to that expression like ah no seas inocente like don't be so naive and it's like are you kidding me (laughs) like but what a what a beautiful place to be this place of innocence like childlike wonder and trust you know like before all of the the wounding and all of the traumas and all of the the experiences that caused us each of us to to shut down to protect ourselves that place where the world is a good place and the people around us are here to love us and keep us safe like to be able to love from that perspective i just want to show you something and yes i agree with all those things but so can you see this magnet Yes, you were talking about that a lot over the Yeah. So like cuz yeah, it's about that childlike place. But then it's like look at this man's face. Like is that are those not like the eyes of that like the innocent heart and it's like I mean Nelson Mandela spent 30 years in prison. So it's not like he he's naive about what what the world is possible of. And I'm like that's that's what I'm here for. Like, I, to, if you can live through that kind of darkness and still maintain that level of, of like belief, like it always seems impossible until it's done. It was like, I was saying the other day, like that, that expression, like, well, it's all going to be okay in the end. So if it ain't okay, this ain't the end. Like that kind of like, you know, it's, Cause I, it's, I think that's the way that we like tell ourselves the story that, that, that kind of innocence or pure heartedness, it's like, oh, well, that's because they haven't seen what the world's possible capable of yet or whatever. And it's like, no, actually there's a kind of innocence that's greater than any of that. That's like, yeah, well, and like, and I feel like that innocence, like the, that one, like Nelson Mandela as the example, like to when one attains that level of innocence and trust, and I feel like it's a trust in oneself that we attain, you know, when we can let go of all of the stories and all of the baggage that we're carrying, all of the projection and the blaming and your finger right now that's broken, <laughs> you know, <laughs> fuck you to the world and actually kind of return to this inner sense of wholeness. You know, that, that unshakable, that innocence is an unshakable innocence. 
Mm. It comes an unshakable force that then we get to create our lives from. Yeah. And that's not because we don't have experience or we haven't been broken or we haven't been fucking pummeled. Like I know you and I both have had our fair share of, of pummeling. pummeling. <laughs> and the, the desire and the will to keep on showing up, to shed those layers that keep us from being our whole selves. Yeah. You know, not only one with something bigger than ourselves, but one within ourselves, all those pieces, those parts of ourselves that we've kind of rejected ourselves to, to bring them back. Like I heard you say, like this innocent piece of yourself, this beautiful little child inside that just adored life and adored her grandmother. And, you know, to like really call that part of oneself back, it, like it, it's life enhancing. Yeah. Draining, like you were saying. Yeah. And I feel like it's also even, I mean, this is, this one's quite funny too. Cause it's like, you know, it's like that difference between fighting against versus fighting for, you know, it's like, I, like I can do, you know, and I was, I was in that place last weekend. I was just like last week, you know, I'm like fighting against the Australian government because I can't travel and fighting against, you know, it's like that fighting against, or am I fighting? Like, what am I fighting for? And it's like, I will fight for that innocent heart. And it's not fighting, you know, in the sense of the other. It's like, I don't know. It's it's that feeling like that healthy part of myself that's standing up for that voice, that's standing up against my own judgment or of or shame about, you know, being too innocent or being too idealistic or being too naive or, you know that there's a lot of um, inner voices that I really need. And, and it feels like that's part of what reignited for me in that ceremony it was like, I, I'm going to defend this. I'm going to defend this voice. I'm going to fight for her. Yeah. Like it's so in the same way, like you're, you, you know, you, you are a mom, you're a mom, you have two children, you have a little girl in particular, you know, like, and I often hear you speak of her with just such adoration and, one of the things you love about her so much is her innocence and her willingness to love and trust people. And, you know, that's so worthy of being protected. It's so precious. Mm -hmm. Like you, I know you wild buffalo would fucking, you know, you'd <laughs> fight, you'd fight for her, that preciousness, yeah. sacredness that you see in her. And, and again, it's like being willing to be a stand and a, and a stand for, to fight for that innocence, that preciousness that's inside of each of us you know, rather than kind of, like you said, like carrying that shame or self-flagellating, like I'm not good enough, or I'm not there yet, I should be doing this better or more, and actually to just be okay with who we are and and be a stand, like a, hold really safe and healthy boundaries to those voices that are kind of trying to enter in and tell us that we're anything other than pure, whole mm. beings. Totally connected to something so much more precious and magical and extraordinary than we could, our minds could ever fathom. Yeah. You know, and that's what, yeah. Like that's what I witnessed in you and me in ceremony the other day is just like feeling these kind of negative thought forms, these negative thought patterns coming in, trying to kind of take us off our, out of our center of like, Oh, I'm, I've got me. I love me. I can be kind here. And when those negative thoughts come to just be like, oh, whoa, 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 this is my space. I'm yeah. going to hold this space. I'm going to be a stand for this space. Yeah. And so for me, it feels like, you know, I think ritual and ceremony is such a great place to touch into that. Right. And to like really anchor that in. And then, you know, like my question, my next question for life is like, I understand how to be that as a little girl, like where, where, where I am relatively protected. And then like, you know, I look at this, this guy and I'm like, okay, you know, like I come back to my little relatively comfortable life and already it's like how to not, you know, it's like, what's the journey now to becoming that kind of innocent that's, I don't know how to like, it's, it's like, the essential or the maybe it's the mature innocent you know the the innocent that is like really really sees this world 
for all that it is, like we talked about as well, like sees the light and the darkness, sees all of it and still like has that level of trust that like, yeah, yeah, it's, it seems impossible because it's not done yet, but you know, then it's going to be done. You know, like that's my journey right now of like meeting that, meeting the world as it is right now and not letting that pull me back into all of those different, as you see, like all the different forms of, you know, whether it's judgment or resistance or self-righteousness or blame, or it's like, well, that's a practice. Yeah. And that's what I really love about working with, you know, this kind of idea that there is no other, you know, that we're all connected in some way, you know, and I feel like the more I can begin to like kind of see those parts that I resist in like the other and I can see those parts inside of myself and start to really come to accept those parts inside of myself and forgive like forgiveness feels like such a big piece to that forgive myself for those places where I'm still out of integrity or where I'm you know fucking up the planet or not taking the best care of myself or the land or other people or I'm still carrying shame or guilt or something like when I can really come to accept those parts of myself that it's almost like I can see through I can see through the eyes of someone who has a deeper level of acceptance you know so it's like the perpetrators outside of me they don't they're not like these bad these monsters that are trying to like fuck with me you know they're actually just hurt little children as well right they're broken little children as well and you know we didn't we haven't had a personal chat about the ceremony I said in on on Saturday you know like I offered a prayer for like you know the one percent like those Mm. those those men those that patriarchal and like some in particular by big names that you know we can kind of sit here during these times and be like they're the problem they're the and like I offered a huge prayer to the fire around like bless you guys like you're actually that little child inside of you that was hurt that was that was wounded that was traumatized that didn't feel connected to the earth that didn't feel loved that didn't feel cared for that you know like we've been talking about hurt people hurt people healed Mm -hmm. people heal people so it's like really dropping into that space and offering this prayer to them being like I forgive you men like I forgive you guys so like let's work together to make this a better place for all of us. It's not you against us or us against you. Actually, we're all here together. Mm-hmm. And how can, you know, I take responsibility within myself and like begin to see even like a little, little bit of light in like the Bill Gates or the Dan Andrews or, you know, the people that we can, you know, there's hundreds and thousands of names we can name, but of people that, you know, we can perceive as the ones harming us. So really, we're all in it together. And yeah, that was a really profound moment to actually come to the place inside of myself where I could offer like a genuine, you know how I pray, babe, like offer a genuine oh, prayer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Offer a genuine prayer. On <laughs> all levels, in all dimensions and space and time, it is happening. Um, yeah, so again, it's like, yeah, really, really welcoming, welcoming all those parts inside of ourselves and bringing them into wholeness, because mm-hmm. I feel like that is such a huge step towards reclaiming and returning to our own innocence. Um, really. Yeah, yeah. And how can we be ambassadors of that, Example, ex- examples of that, and be a stand for that in ourselves and in the people around us and the people we work with and the people we love and be a ripple. Well, I guess this is our first start. It's our first start, mama. Mm. Just a seed, just a tiniest seed. Mm. I know you got to go. Well, yeah, you. let's to be continued on that because that, that feels like the question of this time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much for taking some time out of your day to be here with me. I love you so much. I know we'll, you. we'll be together soon enough. Mm. Bless you. Yeah. Thank you so much. This was a lot of fun. Let's do it again. again. I love you. (laughs) Me too. Bye. Bye.